We'll be looking at AC power and how we calculate that based on a sinusoidal voltage and a current waveform. So I'm going to start out with if we have a voltage waveform and our voltage is usually, usually our reference. And in the last video I actually used sine. The convention is to use cosine, but they're interchangeable. So um, I'll go forward using cosine, but you can do all the same equations with sine. So here is a cosine wave, and we're going to say this is our voltage waveform. Okay, so if we want to look at power, we need to look at the voltage and the current waveform. So the current waveform will be similar, but in many cases it will have an offset. So here we're going to center this right at zero, so that's where there's no phase shift here. But we could potentially have a phase shift. So let's say, oh, I'm really bad at drawing these, I, I apologize. But okay, so something like that. And the magnitude may or may not be the same, I'm just drawing it similarly. But the important thing is that there is a phase shift here. So this difference here between this, we'll call this phi. And I want to define here, phi is the phase shift between the voltage and the current. And it's defined by the shift, phase shift of voltage minus the phase shift of the current. So in this case, our phase shift for the voltage is zero. And then we have, in this case, actually, this phase shift I would be a little bit negative, so it's because it's a little bit ahead here. So if you do the math for all this, you'll see that this value would have to be negative. All right, so that means actually that the phase shift would be positive, which is kind of confusing. Go through for yourself and kind of prove it to yourself how this all works. Okay, so we have an amplitude here again. So we're going to draw the current waveform. We're using these root twos because these are the RMS values. I'm not going to write down RMS, but in your head, this should put a little RMS here and here. So these are the RMS values for these waveforms. And again, here we're going to use cosine, but now we has, have a phase shift. And so if you do all the math again, you'll see that you actually want to subtract the phase shift here. And if you put this into here, you would get this minus phi v and a plus phi i. And if here we have our no phase shift on the voltage, we'd actually just get plus a phi i here again. I think that might have been too confusing. Go through and do the math for yourself on the phase shift. It can be confusing. OK, so if you trust me, though, that these are our waveforms for this, now we're going to go ahead and calculate the instantaneous power. Okay, so to do that, we're going to do instantaneous power, so P of T, and all we have to do is multiply voltage and the current waveform together. Okay, easy. So let's plug in these values. So we're multiplying these together. We're going to have a root 2, and we're going to square it, so it's going to be just 2. Then we have V and I, the RMS values. And then we have two cosines. So let's just multiply them together. Oops. So now we have the cosine of omega t minus our phase shift between our two waveforms. OK, so this is a little bit, uh, I don't really know what to do with this. Hey, Valerie, do you, do you know what to do with this? Valerie says to use the trigonomic trig identities, which she has already written on the board for us, so thank you very much. So we have a trigonometry um, identity here, trig identity, and we see that if we have the cosine of a and b multiplied by each other, we can simplify it into this form. So we can take that and plug it in here. So we'll do that. So first we'll just make this 2 vi. And now we're going to break apart this. So we're going to get 1 half here. And we're going to do the cosine. We need to subtract these two values. So we get omega t minus omega t. And I'm going to carry the negative plus phi. Okay, And then we're going to add 
cosine, and they're going to add these two values together. So we're going to get, I'm going to do some pre-adding, so we're going to add these together, 2 omega t minus v. Okay, we'll notice that these will cancel out with each other. So we will be left with this. cosine of phi plus cosine of 2 omega t minus phi. And I, of course, forgot to cancel these out, but we see that we are going to be left with just the RMS values here. Okay, so the instantaneous power is equal to, and we're going to distribute this out, so vi cosine of the phase difference, phi, plus vi cosine of 2 omega t, so 2 times our frequency before, with some phase shift. Okay, so this is our expression for our instantaneous power. And again, I'm really bad at drawing, but what you can think about this is this is our DC component. So this is some offset, some DC offset, so we can think about it like this. There's some DC offset that's based on the RMS voltage and current and then the phase difference, the cosine of the phase difference. And then we have some oscillating waveform that is two times the frequency here. So we would get some sort of I'm really bad at these. So here we would get some sort of waveform here. You should actually look at a book to get the right waveform. I'm really bad at drawing these. So this is the oscillatory component. So we have some sort of oscillation. Okay, so if now we want to look at the real power, the average power, we can actually look directly at this equation. So now we want to find the real power. So that's P, the average power. Well, we have this DC component, and then we have this oscillatory component that's based on a cosine. If we take the average of a cosine, it's going to be zero. So actually, we can completely ignore this, and then we're just left with the DC component. So the power, the average power, is actually V, I, and then the cosine of our phase difference. So this is why we use RMS values, is because when we do the power calculations, we see that they get the RMS values very nicely right here. If we were to write these as non-RMS, we would have to do a little bit more math. We see when we multiply them out, we get these nice values. So that's why we use the RMS values for power. So I hope that kind of made sense looking at the two waveforms of voltage and current. Just looking at the power waveform, we see that we get a DC component and an oscillatory component. When we want to just find the average power, we can get rid of this oscillatory component and just look at the DC component. So these are the two equations for power, the instantaneous and the average power of an AC waveform. So I'm still the world's worst drawer but I went back and uh, attempted to make this a little bit better. So if the blue is our V of T, voltage waveform, green is our current waveform, then I made a better representation of the power, instantaneous power, P of T. I also wanted to mention that this average value here that's shown, this uh, is the average power, and if our phase shift is zero, so if these are exactly the same, we will have, that's the highest value that this can be. And if they are off exactly 90, then we will have, this value will actually be zero. So it's, um, this is, this value is also called the power factor. Factor. And that kind of tells us how much power is actually going, being delivered to the load. So that's just some extra facts there and a slightly better drawing of the power. So thanks.